Hi there, Emily Midget here with you today on the Pink Fresh Studio YouTube channel, and today I have some super saturated ombre tone on tone die cut inspiration to share with you. And I am going to be using the new Secret Garden uh, die. It's a cover plate die, and it's super detailed and gorgeous. And I'm going to be pairing it with the Garden Wreath uh, standalone die set. This die set is filled with all kinds of little sprigs and flowers, great for accenting your large sentiment dies. I also have the Happy Birthday Hot Foil Plate and Coordinating Die. Um, I've hot foiled it in a really pretty rose gold hot foil. Then we're going to be blending Peach Fuzz Coral Reef Passion Fruit and Raspberry Bliss Inks. And the combination of those four inks creates the most gorgeous sunset ombre. Um, it's just really a lovely combination. So I'm going to start by blending. I'm going to blend two separate A2 panels of white cardstock. This is just plain white cardstock. And I'm using large blending brushes to blend these four shades of ink together on these two separate card fronts in the exact same order. And they're going to basically be twins, um, identical twins, or as close to identical as we can make them. Um, so I'm starting with the Raspberry Bliss and I am working this ink, I dab my ink blending brush onto my stamp pad, and then I am working on my glass mat. Now I find a glass mat to be an extremely important and useful tool in lots of different ways for my craft room, but especially for ink blending. The ink blending, when you kind of brush that ink off of the edge of your paper onto that uh, glass mat, it helps it come, uh, helps the the brush glide onto your paper very, very smoothly. And it helps to create a much more seamless blend, in my opinion. So I am blending each of these colors. I dab, I, I kind of tap my brush onto my glass mat to kind of get off some of the excess ink that I have picked up off of my ink pad. Um, and that just helps me get a little bit softer and smoother blend. Um, so each time I am blending each color on both of the panels of white cardstock. And that's because we're going to use one of these ombre blended panels of cardstock as the background. And one of them is going to be die cut with that beautiful secret garden detailed die. So now we've done, um, we've done all four of our ink colors. Now we're on the last one. We're on pe peach fuzz. And you can see that this uh, background panel that these background panels are not super vibrant. I want really deep, incredible, saturated color. So we're going to take these panels and we're going to do it all over again. And I'm just going to show it to you really, really quickly because you don't need to see me blend all of these again. You've got the basic idea. We tap the ink off of our uh, off of our cardstock panel onto the glass mat, and then just sweep that ink on there to get a smooth blend. And then I just keep kind of working the color until I achieve a saturation level that I'm happy with. I want really deep, intense, vibrant color for both of these panels. So if it means that I have to go back a couple of times with my blending brush, sometimes I don't even pick up any ink. I just use the residual ink left over on as I'm doing with this pink brush here. I haven't picked up any extra ink, but I wanted to kind of smooth that blend out between the hot pink and the, um, the passion fruit ink. So I just use the leftover ink from my pink brush. And you can see I use a variety of techniques to of, of um, movements to get my achieved uh, desired um, ink blending. Sometimes I use a circular motion going off of the page. Sometimes I start in the middle of the page and softly go in a circular motion. Sometimes I just kind of flick the brush gently. And that helps me get a really nice smooth blend all the way down the front of my card. So now I am taking the Secret Garden die and I have chosen one of the two panels. I picked the one that I thought the blend was not quite as smooth on because we're just going to be die cutting it. So we're only going to see part of that blend. So I've run that through my die cut machine and we're just going to pop out all of those little pieces. I do have a die picker tool that I find to be really, really useful for intricate dies like these. It just kind of helps to save my manicure for one thing. I don't have to sit there and pick at it with my fingernails, but it also 
just really speeds the process along to be able to just poke those out. You could also use a pair of sharp scissors or um, your tweezers. I've also used those. But you can see after we die cut that secret garden die from that ombre background and then lay it on top, it be creates this lovely tone on tone texture on our background. And that's what we're going for. I do want to add a little bit of extra height to that super intricate die. So I die cut the Secret Garden die again from some more white cardstock. And I am just going to layer the blended ombre die cut directly over the top of that white die cut. And that's going to create a little bit of extra height and texture. So here I've got some handmade, these are handmade metallic watercolors from, I don't know how to pronounce it, I-U-I-L-E is how you spell the shop name on Etsy. Um, but they're just gorgeous, super sparkly uh, um, watercolors. And I'm going to spritz some, I'm going to splatter some on the back of that panel. Um, and it's just going to add a little bit of extra element of shine and sparkle and interest to the background. So I've used liquid glue and I'm adhering those two super intricate die cuts together. And that liquid glue gives me a little bit of wiggle room so that if I don't get it placed exactly where I want it this first time, I can kind of maneuver it a little bit. But now we're going to do some splattering. I've got my paintbrush and I'm just gonna splatter the background with that crazy sparkly rose gold um, watercolor that I got from that Etsy shop. And it just creates a little bit of extra interest and texture to the background, as well as coordinating with the uh, rose gold hot foil happy birthday that I've already shown you. We're going to add, I want to create this monochromatic, you guys know that I love my monochromatic um, looks, and I want all of my pieces to coordinate. I want all of my die cut pieces and all of my different um, elements to coordinate with each other with the color scheme. So I am going to be adding, I've got uh, coral reef, passion fruit, and a little bit of raspberry bliss that I am blending over the top of that hot foil. Hot foil is super easy to blend over because it resists just like uh, embossing. So no need to worry about um, that ink kind of messing up your hot foiling because you can just brush it off with a microfiber cloth. So now I'm selecting some different textured cardstock. I've got a really shiny hot pink foil cardstock. And then I also have a rose gold um, glitter foil cardstock that we're going to use to cut the some elements from the garden wreath die set. I wanted to add just a little bit of foliage and some, some extra pops of color to this card front. Not that this card front wasn't vibrant enough on its own, but I wanted to add a little bit of extra texture and interest to our happy birthday sentiment. So here my splattered card panel has dried and now I'm gonna use again that liquid glue and I'm just gonna adhere that uh, die cut panel over the top. And that extra layer that we added on there helps to pop that really detailed die cut up a little bit and helps it to be a little bit more visible. That extra height helps it to be a little bit more visible on that blended background. So we made I made sure to face the uh, ombre the same direction. So we we're going from light to dark from top to bottom. And now I am just adding some uh, foam tape to the back of my happy birthday die cut, my happy birthday foiled die cut. And I did put a little bit of liquid adhesive on my happy birthday die cut so that I could make sure it was nice and straight. I do that with foam adhesive a lot when I am working especially with a uh, sentiment because I want to make sure that that sentiment is nice and straight and sometimes I need that little bit of extra wiggle time to kind of maneuver that sentiment die cut up and down to make sure that it's nice and straight. So now I'm just arranging the little tiny little flowers and uh, glittering foliage around kind of in a, a little cluster at the bottom of my happy birthday sentiment. I'm going to just kind of arrange those with both liquid and foam adhesive um, just to add some extra interest and color and texture to this card front since it is kind of monochromatic. Not quite, but it is sort of... You know, uh, tone on tone, we'll say, tone on tone. Um, so I'm going to add some butterscotch glitter drops to the centers of the larger flowers. And I think this really just takes it up a notch. They're almost an exact match for that uh, glittery foliage that we added, that glitter cardstock foliage. And I think it just really adds something to the card. I think the, all of the different elements of texture and shine and shimmer really take this um, kind of monochromatic ombre card to another level. So you can see, here's the finished product. 
lots of shine, lots of sparkle, lots of texture with that super intricate die cut in the background. <clears throat> so I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned something. I hope you will give this uh, ombre technique a try of uh ombre blending two different panels and using one of those panels for an intricate die cut. So thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, maybe hit the subscribe button so you can see more content from us from the future. Have a great day. Bye.